Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we come today to Psalm uh, 22. Uh, Psalm 22, uh, 31 uh, powerful verses, which I'm going to give you a moment to read and then you come back to me. That's Psalm 22. Okay. Wow. This is uh, an incredibly powerful psalm. And I want you to begin with one minute, 60 seconds of prayer. 60 seconds of prayer. And I want you to contemplate what you've just read. Okay? I want you to contemplate what you've just read in 60 seconds, beginning now. Okay, now I hope and pray that when you read this psalm, you were transported directly to the cross. From the very first words of the first verse, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right until the end, I hope you were immediately transported to the cross. Indeed, uh, the more uh, scholarly among you, and I know there are many in Marilyn and Darlingstown, will recognise within this psalm um, um, much of Matthew chapter 27. All right. So what you will have seen or in your, in your head and in your heart is the Lord on the cross is the Lord uh, fully God and fully human and in the fullness of his humanity on the cross dying for us, which of course is entirely appropriate in this Easter season uh, for us to be considering this. And hopefully as well as you prayed, you will have considered the enormity of uh, the sacrifice that was made at the cross. You see, this, this psalm is a psalm of personal lament for a struggling, oppressed human being. All right? A person who is struggling in many, many ways, but who cries up to God, cries out to the Lord, has total confidence in the Lord, but is nevertheless in anguish at the time, and then is vindica vindicated in his cry to the Lord as, as he continues to pray and praise through this psalm. And then from about uh, verses 22 to the end, that vindication is brought to fruition when the Lord hears, hears the prayers. So it is a psalm of personal lament for any human being but most commentators will agree that we are then able to transpose that thought of for any human being to the ultimate human being which is Jesus Christ which is why we see uh, so much of of the cross narrative within the psalm and in particular if you read Matthew 27. Now one of the one of the responses to uh, the anguish or this personal lament, this person who is in his humanity and his suffering humanity is crying out to the Lord. One of the, the personal responses that the individual has, that he has, is that he is determined that his suffering will not be in vain. In much the same way, of course, as we understand and recognize that the suffering of our Lord not be in vain. He died. Death was conquered. He rose again. Sins forgiven. All of the gospel narrative within what happened at Easter. From Good Friday to Easter Sunday, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the renewing of of the relationship between humanity and humanity's creator is in, in God. So this is what is going on then when 
the writer is determined that this sacrifice will not be in vain. So he is determined thereafter to tell everyone about what has happened and how faithful God has been. So if you look at verses, verse 22, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. In other words, the response of, of the suffering human is to appeal to the creator God. And, having, and when God responds and the cry of help is vindicated, the response thereafter is to make sure we tell everyone about just how wonderful God is. And in this Easter season, when we take that personal suffering and we see the suffering of Jesus Christ on the cross, and what that means for you and for me, we are then supposed to make sure we tell everyone. We tell everyone. And one of the things then that I was thinking about as I read the psalm and I considered what I was going to say to you is, what will we tell our children? What will we tell our grandchildren? about the way in which the Lord helped us at this time of significant need. What will we say? How are we reflecting on what the Lord is doing now in our time of need, in our present reality? What will we say? What will we say about the love of God? What will we say about the strength of God? What will we say about the compassion of God? What will we say about salvation that is found in Jesus Christ? What will we say when this is all done? What will we tell our children? What will we tell our grandchildren? And equally important, what are we telling people now? about how we are behaving and responding in the middle of the crisis. What are we saying? Because surely we are crying out to God in prayer and he hears our prayer. What are we saying about the wonderful love of the Lord? And we see that emphasized right at the end. Verse 30, posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Jesus went to the cross that our sins may be killed forever, that salvation may be available to us in the person of Jesus Christ. What are we telling this generation? What will we tell the generation to come? Now that's worth another minute or two of your prayer and contemplation. Amen.